What's up, Broncos country? Welcome back to the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube for the latest episode of Broncos Now. As always, I'm your host, Sydney Jones. And coming up on today's episode, Broncos lead writer Eric Dolala joins the show. We'll discuss some of the new rule changes made at the NFL's annual league meeting this week and discuss the Broncos' new signing. All that and more coming up. Joining me here in the Broncos podcast studio for today's episode of Broncos Now is Broncos lead writer Eric Talala. Eric, thanks for joining me. Busy week this week. We just got back from Orlando from the NFL's annual league meeting. So yeah, I feel like we're both a little more tan, maybe. Maybe. Got some I sun mean, down there. We didn't there. really get to lay out and have. No, you know, it just worked. Just worked, pretty much. But got to talk to a lot of uh, great people, yep. pretty much all of Broncos leadership, and mm -hmm. learned a lot of stuff. There's a lot going on down there, Sid. There was. It was a fun few days down there, Eric. And, of course, uh, a lot of things coming out of those meetings. All the NFL owners met and passed a few new rule changes that will be implemented this year. I want to start with kind of the main one. Honestly, one of the most significant changes we've seen in recent years, the new kickoff rules. Eric, what did you learn about that? Yeah, Sid, well, the kickoff had become a play that uh, basically – didn't matter much. Yeah. And, you know, we saw Marvin Mims take one back against the Dolphins, but there were very few uh, touchdown returns last season. We'd seen teams, especially in Denver, just kick the ball out of the end zone. It was a, a ceremonial play, for lack of a better word. And this is going to make it fun again. It's going to make it exciting. So it, it's going to look different for sure. Um, they're, they're taking an XFL rule. The kicker's still going to be way back on the 35 yard line on his own side of the field. But then everybody else on the kicking team is going to be up at the 40 yard line mm -hmm. on the other side of the field. You've got the receiving team in this landing zone um, between the 30 and 35 yard line. And, and Nobody can move except the kicker and the returner until the ball's either caught or touches the ground. And so mm. it's going to be kind of a, a mad dash at that point yeah. to see who can cover the kick, who can set up a block. Um, and it'll be fun to watch, I think. I think the hope is that it sets up some big returns. Certainly if you watch some of these XFL plays, there's some kind of trick plays where a blocker can come back behind and take a pitch and return oh, wow. the ball. Um mm. It does sound like, Sid, there's going to be some some strategy type things that have to be figured out. Do you have two returners back there? Because if the ball lands, leave uh, between the 20 and the goal line, it's mm -hmm. a live ball. So anybody who's at oh, the 40 can run down and get it. Right. Um, if you kick it in the end zone and it lands in the end zone first without being caught or it goes out of the end zone, mm -hmm. the touchback is now at the 30. Um, they talked about the 35, but it is going to be the 30-yard line. So it, it's a little more penal in terms mm -hmm. of – um, you know, if you kick it back there, but some teams may decide, hey, we're not risking it this week. But the big thing is, one, I think I think it's going to take some time to figure out, um, you know, how does this all work? Fans right. are, I think it'll be a little bit of an adjustment. And, and in terms of teams figuring out how do we want to cover these, how do we yeah. want to block these? But I do think it'll be exciting. And it certainly puts a big priority on having a great returner. Definitely. And the Broncos have Let's that have one. in Marvin yep. Mims. And so Sean Payton was asked at the coach's breakfast on Monday, hey, do you like this rule? And he said he did. And then um, he was asked, well, do you like it because you have Marvin Mims? And he, yeah. he kind of smiled and said, well, that's a good reason to like it, right? <laughs> so uh, we'll see if Marvin Mims gets a few more chances mm -hmm. to return kicks this year. And we'll see if the Broncos can maybe give their offense some good field position to work with. Yeah. I will say the other thing from a coverage standpoint is we saw how big of a stride the Broncos made um, under Mike Westoff, Ben Kawika, Chris Banjo. 100%. It's really going to matter now if you mm -hmm. have a good special teams group. You know, maybe sure. prioritize in roster building, having some more guys that can cover, yeah. having guys that are able to block there for the return units. And so having a trusted special teams staff is going to be critical. Um, and I think a place where the Broncos might hold an edge. Definitely. Yeah, Eric, going off of that, curious – how will onside kicks work then? Because it seems like those will no longer be kind of a surprise. Yeah, no more surprise onside yeah. kicks. Um, so you won't see what we saw the first play of the season this yeah. last year. You won't see, uh, you know, the, the successful play that Sean Payton had in the Super Bowl with New Orleans, obviously. Mm -hmm. You've got to declare onside, onside kicks, kicks now. And makes sense. some people think, hey, is this a, a precursor to – a change to the onside kick rule and is, you know, do you eventually get to that fourth and 20 opportunity that several right. teams have proposed over the last couple of years? Mm -hmm. But you're right. So that'll be a change. The squib kick, which we've typically seen, you know, you try to either maybe pinball it off somebody at the, the 40 yard line, yeah. or you just try to waste some time that you can't do that anymore either. Cause it's got to land, I believe again, past the 20 yard line or else it goes out to the 40. So, um, 
there's going to be some some slight changes in terms of strategy, and that'll be part of, especially in the preseason, I think, uh, figuring out what works, what doesn't. Are there any kind of unexpected consequences here? But it'll be, I think, for the first time in a long time, a, a really fun and exciting play to watch, and it's no longer when you go up and get a, a refill on pretzels or chips. Yeah. you gotta, you got to stay there. <laughs> stay you got to watch the attention. play and, and, and watch, right? Yeah, I think it'll be good. Well, Eric, in addition to that, uh, hip drop tackles are now banned. That was another rule change. And the NFL's competition committee was actually all unanimous on that decision as well. So that's interesting. Yeah, we change. Yeah, and that was a uh, kind of a quick thing, right? Think, right. I, mean, I don't think before last season a lot of people have even heard, heard about mm-hmm. the hip drop tackle. And now all of a sudden um, – they've eliminated them or are going to try to eliminate them from the game. I think it's an important distinction for those people who maybe are not as familiar with the play. You can still tackle a guy from behind and drag him down. The issue is that what they're really focusing on is a swivel hip drop tackle. Mm -hmm. And what that is is where you grab somebody and then you pull yourself up Uh, off the ground as the tackler and then bring them down. Right. Um, I believe there were 15 or so instances last year where players suffered serious injuries due to that form of tackling. Um, The NFL found it injures players at a 25 times higher rate than a normal tackle. And so there's certainly a reason to get rid of this. Now, the NFL PA uh, was not as big on a ban here. Um, They they think it's going to be too hard to legislate. And we kind of have heard the same thing from several coaches at the owners' meetings in that, you know, is this something where it takes some time to figure out how to call a penalty? Is it penalized on the field or is it more of, is it legislated through fines later in the week? Mm-hmm. I think it's maybe to be seen how the league, how the officials go about calling this. Um, and certainly, you know, when horse cat, when horse collar tackles were uh, outlawed, outlawed, there were similar concerns about, Definitely. hey, are you going to be able to call these in real time? You're already asking a lot of the officials. And generally, said, I think we see people don't tackle like that, like that generally. Yeah. Um, and it's rare that you see that. And so I think the hope is that here, too, you're going to find a way to to legislate this out of the game, make it safer for safer. everybody, keep everybody's favorite players out on the yeah. field. Um, but, it, it, again, it might take some time for officials to figure it out, for the league to decide, hey, is this something – are we seeing three of these calls a game or are we seeing one call and then a couple of players later in the week are getting a fine? I mean, we'll have to see exactly how that plays out. But Definitely. again, you can still tackle guys from behind. It's not about that. It's about you the can't swivel. lift yourself up and then bring them down with your weight mm-hmm. on top of their uh, right. uh, normally the back of their legs. So that's the distinction is kind of that lifting off the ground. Yeah, player safety, definitely the priority there. Eric, the NFL trade deadline is also changing. NFL owners approved on Tuesday to push that back a week, so that will now be after week nine of games. Yeah, great move. I think think this is the best one so far. Yeah, (laughs) (laughs) I I agree. I think the longer you're able to push the trade deadline back, the better, just because, I mean, even week nine, you're still only halfway through the season, and certainly um, I think the longer – you're able to wait for the trade deadline, the more teams are likely to make moves. moves and and yeah. certainly you don't always want um, star players to go places but or go other places. Mm-hmm. But I do think it's exciting for fans when you see, um, you know, a, a player change teams midseason or your favorite team go out and get somebody to help for the stretch run. And if you're a team that's not playing as well, it gives you a chance to, um, to get back some draft capital. Obviously the Broncos – essentially almost every year except this past one, have been very active in recent years at the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. And, and they've gotten uh, some picks that have made it possible to go out and make moves. Right. I mean, Sean Payton was acquired fine, because yeah. the Broncos got a pick for trading Bradley Chubb. Um, and so I do think it just gives teams more information to work with. If you're a contender, it gives you one more week to see, hey, do we need to go get a star wide receiver for the stretch run? We're going to be able to trade a pick here. Or if you're a team that... Now, maybe you enter, uh, you know, week nine, four and four, and you're like, hey, okay, are we going to do this or not? Mm-hmm. And you you lose a game and you decide, okay, well, we're going to we're going to more time, make a sure. decision here. Or maybe you win and you say, we're going to we're going to see how this plays out. So I think the longer the trade deadline um, or the later the trade deadline is, the yeah. better for teams, better for fans. And uh, said we've seen it move a couple times here. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, this isn't based off anything, but just the the trend we've seen is i wouldn't be surprised if it keeps moving back gradually sure. um now obviously you don't want it to get too late, too late right. but 
uh, yeah, I think this is a, a trend that makes sense and that definitely people were across the league in favor of. Definitely. Well, Eric, a few more changes I want to highlight. Uh, Christmas Day games have been a huge priority for the NFL in recent years. And this year, the NFL will hold two games on Christmas Day. And that's big solely because Christmas is on a Wednesday this year. It is. Yeah. And it'll be uh, there'll be a lot of football. There will be a lot of football that week. That week, Sid. Obviously, you got Monday night. Mm-hmm. Um, you'll now have Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday. night football. Um, Black Friday. Oh, no. That's Black, Thanksgiving. Black Friday Never mind. Uh, near Thanksgiving, but um, I believe the the college football playoffs and oh right right um, you know are kind of in that they start to be in that range. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll have to see how the dates all work out exactly. But sure. um, in terms of the Christmas Day games, people must be wondering, okay, well, how can a team play on Sunday and then play again Wednesday? Yeah, and the teams that play on Christmas Day on Wednesday. We'll play that previous Saturday. So they're still going to have right. the same amount of rest that a Thursday night team would have from a normal Sunday. Mm-hmm. You obviously have a one day shorter week um, the previous week, but it, it still makes it um, palatable. The league's pretty, uh, you know, pretty resolute in saying we're not going to play on a shorter time frame than that. And, and, you know, this is just from a standpoint of the ratings. It, it was a no brainer. And, um, you know, Roger Goodell said, Wednesday games are not going to be a typical thing for the league. The league. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when Christmas falls on a Wednesday, and, you know, we'll have to see if, uh, you know, if Christmas at some point falls on a Tuesday when that happens, you know, does the league make a decision to play then? But they were very intentional about this. It sounds like they're going to play it on two games. It sounds like they'll be in the afternoon kind of time yeah. frame. Mm-hmm. They saw last year they had a triple header on Christmas Day. Right. And that, that night game, even though it was Baltimore-San Francisco, I believe, it had lower ratings than some of the other games, even though it was kind of the prime oh, matchup. So right. they like that those two afternoon, afternoon slots. Yeah. Um, Everyone's tired Exactly. On Christmas yeah, Day. By had, the time, uh, yeah. your big Christmas dinner. Dinner, yep. Got to go to sleep, have a little eggnog. And so, Absolutely. Um, nice to just have it in the afternoon. And, uh, you know, I, again, it's a ratings move obviously but mm-hmm. i think it is good for fans good. and it's yeah. fun and you know i'm certainly not opposed to watching no. more nfl uh football on christmas Me and too. um i don't know if i want to play on christmas yeah. but i'm certainly uh open to watching it and and granted the teams that do play on christmas you would think that it'd be like a thursday night game where you get that long weekend afterwards for so sure. thursday friday thursday. saturday sunday you're off anyway so maybe it. you uh get that long weekend and, and you're right makes it work makes it worth it but um, it uh, football is a big business, and mm-hmm. uh, playing on Christmas just seems to seems to make sense. Where are some major changes uh, regarding injured reserve as well? Players placed on IR during the preseason are no longer automatically season-ending injuries. So, some big a big decision there. Yeah, no question about it. I think that will be one of the more intriguing things to watch, mm-hmm. um, and it's going to matter more now in terms of injury time frames rehab, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, for those that need a little more clarity, like Tim Patrick obviously got hurt early in training camp right. uh, last year. Mm-hmm. He was placed on IR. That automatically ends his season. Now he could technically have come back had the rules been in place um, like they will be for this upcoming year. So that's that's one element of it mm-hmm. is if a guy has a long-term injury in July, you can put him on IR, save the roster spot, and then he can come back at some point. I believe it's two that you can designate uh, to return mm-hmm. later in the season. The other thing that can be helpful is, you know, Sid, we've seen, like, a, I believe P.J. Locke was a guy last year. Um, he was hurt. Right. He was not ready to play week one. And so you carry him into the regular season for mm-hmm. one day so that you can then put him on IR right. and uh, so that he can be eligible to return. And then you you essentially are exposing two more players to either waivers, waivers or right. you have to release a vet who mm-hmm. can go out there and sign with somebody else. And so that's where this could be helpful too is that, um, you know, say X player is hurt and might be ready week three or week four, uh, but they're not going to be – they're definitely not going to be ready week one. Now you can just put them on IR. You don't have to worry about the roster mechanics of just carrying them for one day. Um, and so that will make, I would think, the end of preseason roster cut roster decisions cuts. a little easier Definitely. for teams and um, maybe a little more straightforward 
get your rosters set, just even if that gives you, you know, hey, we don't have to make a second set of roster moves, gets your initial roster set, you can start preparing for week one mm-hmm. and kind of get ready for the game instead of having to worry about the roster mechanics. Yeah, makes sense. A lot of good rules heading into this new season, Eric. Outside of that, today on the, uh, Thursday, the Broncos signed wide receiver Josh Reynolds to a two-year deal. Um, spoke with him earlier today. He's super excited to be here and really excited to work with Sean Payton. Yeah, he's a he's a fun guy to watch. Yeah. Um, quick, I think said it, he described it to to you as yep. he's smooth. He said smooth. Yeah, yeah. he um, he finds a seam and he goes. Mm-hmm. He's uh, you know not kind of the big body guy that that Cortland is from a, a size standpoint, but sure. he does have the a little bit of height. Yeah, he's tall. Um, and yeah. uh, I'm excited to see how he fits with Cortland with Marvin Mims. Mm-hmm. Um, Tim. You know I- exactly, Tim. I, you know, they just all have slightly different games that seemingly pair well together um sure. he was the quote-unquote number three in detroit i think he showed you know 600 yards five touchdowns last year that he's capable of more than that mm-hmm. and so it'll be fun to watch him and um you know the, the broncos i think as as sean payton said while we were down at the annual meeting said everyone had they had like a, a clear vision for everyone it was an exact fit sort of signing they were very precise yeah. in terms of who they went after and so there were some guys that, you know, if you're a big NFL fan, you probably you probably know and you're familiar with. There's some guys that maybe are uh, ascending players that haven't had as many. Under the radar. Right, yeah. under the radar. And this is a guy that you know. And so yeah. I think from that standpoint, just exciting to sign another guy at wide receiver and uh, and see what he can do for this offense. Yeah, definitely exciting signing there. And a busy week, an exciting week, Eric. A lot going on. Sam. A lot going on. Yeah, it's nice. Well, appreciate you joining the show. You got it. Well, that's going to do it for today's episode of Broncos Now. Broncos Country, thanks so much for tuning in. I'll meet you right back here on the Broncos Podcast Network and YouTube next week for another episode. I will see you all then.